learning to decrease your anxiety will be very valuable to you, right? And and, and this is what I mean by anxiety, right? <laughs> because I'm not a person that feels it a lot. But lately, I found myself feeling some anxiety. And I said, damn, well, if I'm going through it, imagine what the average person is going through. I consider myself to be, you know, very high on the mental resiliency. So the reason that this is happening for a lot of people, first of all, take a look at what's happening around you, right? How many huge events can you say um, that have happened in the last week? How many huge events? And I'm not talking about just personal. I'm talking about global events that have happened. So when there's a banking collapse, there's an inflation, there's a recession, right? You got the president getting arrested. You got political turmoil. You got the goddamn mothership coming down. There's so much stuff to process. So if you're constantly getting news or bad news, when do you have time to process it? And you can't get past anything you don't process. One of the biggest lies that's told is that time heals all wounds. Time is not a cure. Something that happened a thousand years. People will tell you to get over things because it happened so long ago. But if you have not processed that trauma, that pain, and understand the lesson in it, it is always present and always happening. You could be immortal. And somebody could have done you wrong. If you don't learn to get over that, it have felt like it happened yesterday. It's what makes the distance between your issues and your problems and your anxieties, right, is your ability to process them, learn from them, understand them. That creates the distance of like, oh, that feels like it happened so long ago or I don't even feel attached to it no more. But time heals no wounds. If you're the healing agents in your immune system and it's not working in your body, time is not going to heal that. It's your body actually activating. If that system cuts off in your body and you get cut and nothing happens, it wasn't time that healed it. It was the process that your body went through. The antihistamines, the white blood cells come in to clean up, right? It's the process that's going through in your body. So what we talk about, because time is the measurement of motion. So when we go from feeling sick to healing, we're talking about the process that our body is going through. That's why when you get sick and you heat up, that's because your body is heating up, right? To kill, right? Whatever's going on in your body and you sweating it all out and getting rid of it and the toxins and things of that nature. That's how you know you're towards the end of it. So you have to express it. You have to let it out. You have to learn from it. So your immune system is what it learns from it. Right now it knows how to deal with it. But if it encounters something that it is foreign and you get sick, then you die. So when we don't learn f from our pains, our traumas, our issues and those lessons, then we're still going through. them. Don't matter how long ago it happened. So we get mad at people because we don't learn how to heal. So if somebody does you wrong and you never learn how to process issues and traumas and, and, and things of that nature, you're mad at them because you don't know how to heal. Not that what they did was so big and so wrong. You mad because you don't know how to heal. Somebody hurt you goddamn 100 years ago and you still mad at them like it happened yesterday. As soon as you see them, you're triggered. They're not still doing nothing to you. You didn't learn the lesson from it. You didn't learn how to process it. So we live in a society where we don't know how to heal. So it's not until you learn how to heal, you can actually move forward from things that happen in your life. So that's why we walk around hating our exes. We walk around holding grudges because we never learn how to heal from it. This is what gives us more anxiety because one problem is stacked on top of another, is stacked on top of another, is stacked on top of another. So now you can't think clearly because you got five things processing. So it's constantly adding weight onto it. Your brain probably could have dealt with the first one. Your spirit could have dealt with that one. But now it's too much going on. It's like somebody, you 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 hitting the weights and somebody constantly throwing plates on as it's going up. You're like, oh, I can't handle this. So you got to what? You got to learn to take that off, throw a smaller weight, 
put it in repetition, allow your body to grow, build muscle, then go back and now you can handle that weight and that pressure. But it's not until, you understand me, you learn to deal with your level of pressure that you can get stronger and then you stack on things to get better at it. So when you learning and going through processes of understanding what's happening in the world, start one at a time. My whole thing with going through any type of shadow work is understanding why things happen. If you can understand why things happen, right, then you can process it. You know, if you go through any place in the government place in the world, they're trying to process your paperwork. They got to, why are you here, sir? Uh, what's your name? They need certain information. And once they can put all the information, they can process your paperwork. Right? It's a process. But people focus on, I just want to be healed. No, you, you, now you, you stuck. You can't even enjoy the process. You waiting to be rewarded when this is over. No, you got to go down. I done been through some terrible stuff. What is there to learn from this? I realized that I only feel pain because I'm not learning. So the pain keeps coming back as a reminder that there's a lesson. So it's re-triggering and telling you, no, go back, go learn. You ain't even learned yet, but you're trying to get over it. So you may carry that ignorance onto another relationship, onto another job, onto another business project, onto another thing. You have to learn to process. That's why that's that's when you see some people and they're not the same as they were a year ago. And some people are the same because they haven't learned nothing in that time. You see some people, that's a growth mindset. They always growing because they always learning, processing and understanding. Some people, they don't went through bad relationships. They got over it. They kept moving. The other person, they stuck. And then the worst thing is when you, you know what the lesson is and don't want to accept it. And don't forgive yourself for putting yourself in that position. You know? So there's people who have learned lessons but they don't want to accept it. And some people are more comfortable in their trauma than they are in their healing. So you may be talking to somebody. Why? Because that's what you talk to your friends about. The problems and how we put it on everybody else. You don't have circles of accountability where you say, you know what? We keep looking external of everybody who did us wrong. How about we come together as a circle about everything we did wrong? That's not victim blaming. So you get allow these words to get stuck in your head. That's taking ownership. And the moment you change the energy on that, now y'all got the ability to grow together. But when you got trauma circles instead of healing circles, you understand me? It just continues to revolve in that circle and the relationships become based on that process. Process is wealth. You know, process is wealth. Now you can move forward with that learning and you can grow in a better and then the next step in that is what? Forgiveness. You have to learn how to forgive yourself. Once you learn how to forgive yourself, you no longer have to hold the weight. Forgiving yourself is dropping the baggage. Damn, you're right. I, I don't deserve to be carrying these bags around. I forgive myself for being ignorant. I forgive myself, you know, for jumping into a situation knowing that I was ignoring red flags. I forgive myself for picking the wrong partners. I forgive myself, right, for being ignorant or... You know, having traits of deceit or having, you know, wickedness or allowing my lower self to take over at that time. I forgive myself for tricking myself and not caring about my future self. And now I have to live the reality of the decisions that I made previously. So for me, you know, learning to forgive myself is one of my biggest keys. Like right, right after something bad happens, the world wants you to indulge in the mud of your mistakes. So you walk around dirty. Right? No, I'm going to go get clean right afterwards. So giving myself is like, yo, I may have made a mess, but now I'm going to have to go put on some white garments and walk around clean. And people are like, you got the audacity. You just made a whole mess. And now you want to walk around like you clean. Why should I live my, my filth? I'm learning from that. You may be mad at who I was, but not who I am. But you want me to continue to live in the filth. Right? So you can feel better about it. So you want me to feel bad about myself. I learn from that. I forgive myself and I move forward. And guess what I'm not going to do is make the same mistake. I'm not the person that made the mistake if I learn from it. I'm the person that grew from it. So as a grown man, right, as a masculine man, this is masculinity for me. Masculinity is accountability, 
right? It's compassion, it's fearlessness, it's forgiveness. <laughs> That's what that is. And so once you are able to understand that, then you're able to grow. So, you know, I don't, I don't like us walking around because we can be controlled and manipulated by our traumas. You know, like I forgive myself for not being perfect all day long. I made a, I remember when I was younger, I used to make a list of all the things that I would need to change just to be perfect. I'd be like, man, you know, you got this, that, and the third working for you, but you got this, 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 this. If you just did this, boo, you'd be perfect. When I was young, at, at the time, it was like, you know, get your driving license, get your credit together, get you this amount of money, you know what I'm saying, get you this type of girl or something. Like, get, like they'd be like, yo, you'd be perfect if you did those things. And then when you get that, you realize, like, damn, now I got a new... I got a new concept of what perfect is. You feel me? So, nah, that's not enough. That was that was small, but sometimes you can't see you can't see your next level from your vantage point. You feel me? So, so I look at those things that I got going for me and those things that I need to fix. So, when I see people, I always say the best person to expose me is me. I'm always exposing myself at the end of the day. You know, I had that conversation with like, Keys, you know you ain't perfect, man. Don't let the people be out there fooled thinking you perfect and stuff. And I'd be like, you right, I ain't perfect. Then we got to have that exposure session, man. All right, let's talk about it then. Yeah. So, and I think that that's, that's good because, you know, I ain't never met a perfect person. You know, never in my life. Good enough is my idea now because I think perfection comes from insecurity. Never thinking you good enough. So for me, it's like, all right, I'm good enough for the day, but I'm going to be better for tomorrow. Right? So it's giving yourself permission to accept yourself as you are and to be better and to grow into what you could be. So it's a different point of view and angle that you move towards. Like, I'm good. I'm good. Don't get me wrong. If you compare me to somebody who's doing terrible, I'm the greatest man in the world. But I compare myself to people who are doing greater. So therefore, I give myself room to grow. And that's what we try to do sometimes, you know, we try to justify our lack of living up to our highest potential by comparing ourselves to people who barely living in their potential. Like, nah, I ain't comparing myself to them because they can't give me discipline. You can only get greater if you take if you become a disciple of somebody who's greater. And by following them, they become your discipline. Right. So, you know, when you're not doing it right. Oh, I'm not taking on a discipline. I'm not the disciple right now. That's why I'm not getting their results. So we give ourselves excuses all the time. Right. So <clears throat> I never want a person to look at me and be like, I'm perfect. No, nah, that's a trick bag. People want to put you in the bag of perfection only so they can prove your imperfections. So when I see people be like, yo, keys ain't perfect. I wonder about keys. You just you won't wonder about me. You wonder about yourself. You wonder why you ain't pulled out those parts of yourself and why come I know how to communicate. You wonder how come I know how to move and through throughout the world, even when I'm dealing with snakes. You understand me? You you wonder how how the hell are 19 keys be knowing how to goddamn dress and talk and move and move fearless. Something gotta be wrong. I seen somebody say that I got the NSA as handlers. I said, God damn, just because I'm a confident black man? <laughs> damn. Just because I'm a confident black man, I got to have a CIA as a handler. You see how confused we didn't got to the world, man? They can't even believe it. <laughs> I, I ain't going to lie. Because <laughs> I was on Drink Champs. Man, see, I ain't got nothing to do with no Drink Champs. You feel me? Like, I literally went and talked to Blood. That's why. I told him when I first... I'm like, listen, we got to turn Drink Champs into Think Champs. Then... Well, next time I seen him, and then with EY, come on, now we move. We know, we, we practice discernment. We, we strategic. We know how to, you feel me? Like, why? Because I was on a breakfast club. Like, that wasn't they program to put me on there. That's my strategic partnership that I got with my good brothers at EYL. Then we went up there. That's strategy. That's not the industry making changes to fit me in, right? That's me changing the industry to fit myself. You dig? So it's like, I, I went on, uh, what was that? Adam 22 show. I was on there because AD, a black man, invited me on that show. I didn't go because Adam knew who I was. He ain't know who the hell I was. I went on there because a black man from LA, I respect the fact that he got a platform and he want to put something positive on there. So I said, I'm going to pull up. 
So now we changing the platform to talk about something that normally this audience wouldn't get exposed to. <laughs> you feel me? Like that strategy. Just because you don't know how to make a move, don't demonize somebody else for doing it. Just because you don't know how to think. This is what they did in, in, in back in the day when women would practice sciences and chemistry. They would say uh, they witches. Why? Because you don't know how to understand the elements. You don't know how to use the elements. You don't know because you don't know this. So you go demonize it. That's what they do. No, just because you can't do it don't mean it's witchcraft. It's just God business. It just, you know, I just, I get to study the greats and I don't have to make the same mistakes. Somebody go look at me in the future. I get to study what happened with keys and I get to build on that foundation. I hired a PR. That's why I get on the red carpet. Not because they just invite me. No, I understand. You got to move. You got to make connections and relationships with people all throughout this world. I was taught that heaven is money, good home, friendships of all walks of life. So me as a man, you can be on your hoorah. I want to be the most revolutionary person in existence. Right? You got to make friends in all walks of life. Otherwise, you can't live heavenly. That's the way this thing works. We too spooky when we be figuring out, trying to figure out how things work, figure out how the process works. Y'all try to go into the ethers and figure out what the devil doing. No, I figure out a process. How did God move? Because we so infatuated with how the devil move, ain't nobody studying how God move. That's how I thought as a young child. I remember sitting in the interrogation room and they trying to get me to snitch on my older brother showing me some evidence and I'm laughing and they talking about what you laughing at? Because I would think, this is literally my thought. I'm talking about young. My first thought would go, what would God do? Because I believe God is being real. I don't believe him as a spook. So God meaning that, damn, if I got the mind of God, I can think my way out this situation. That was my thought. And I'm laughing because they must don't understand what I know. They must think I'm stupid. So I remember the detective getting mad. Like, why are you laughing? I'm like, good. <laughs> you think this law and order or something. You must think I'm sweet up in here. So I'm laughing because I knew something that he didn't know. But he was trying to operate thinking that I didn't know. So now I'm playing 3D chess. So I knew he was assuming my ignorance and not assuming my consciousness. It was different. But I also learned to let people, let people show their hand. Let people show their hand. You know, people that, people that, you know, possibly could reach out to you and work with you. And instead they get insecure. They're not going to answer. They're not going to say nothing. So instead, they become your enemy when really they wanted to be your friend. And that's okay. I'm going to let you show your hand because I would have never wanted to have a relationship with somebody like you. That's good. Here's another thing, right? We don't always get to grow into the person we want to be in our culture and society, specifically in black America. Because we have, we have this thing where we're always looking for what a person is doing wrong. We're always looking for that person. This is what the white man programmed into is by killing our greats, by killing Malcolm X, by killing Martin Luther King, by killing Fred Hampton, right? By, by murdering all of them, by the FBI going after them. We now have a distrust to each other's growth by embedding agents and different people and doing cointel problem. Now, as soon as we make a mistake, we, 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 as soon as we see somebody doing something great, we start looking for their mistakes to tear them down. And we start looking for reasons of why to put them in these negative categories. That's what we look for. Because we're trying to validate why this person is a devil, why not why they're a God. We're trying to figure out, okay, oh, 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 wait a minute. You didn't get your package from them? Oh, they got to be a scammer. I knew they was too good to be true. But we was looking for it. Or oh, that, that person does a business in the black America we don't even call our businesses startups because startups fail. So if a person has a business and it fails and they learn to become a greater entrepreneur, that's looked at as the journey of growth in business. But in the black community, oh, he was a failure. Oh, he had what business you had? We start making fun of each other first. Oh, his business failed. Oh, that, you had a bad partnership. Oh, y'all scam. It, damn, that's called startups. That's called process. Like, so now. What you destroyed this person for, their reputation, all of that, for one thing that they did on their journey to grow, you could have seen who they became in 10 years, 20 years. We behind the eight ball, so a lot of people going to make immature mistakes. Let's go.
Hell yeah, I'm always venting. How you think I keep myself stress free? You better learn how to do it. See, this is another problem when when a when a black man speaks his voice. Now it's a problem with venting, but then they then they say black men don't express themselves enough. See, you can't win in society. It's a trick bag. The very thing that you get demonized for doing be the very thing that they say you don't do enough. So you get confused if you allow the world to narrate your reality. So that's why when I see I smack it spiritually, you getting smacked around. Get out of my face. Bow, you getting spiritually smacked around. I ain't gonna listen to you. You feel me? So for me, my journey, I thought about that. I got a video. I'm, I'm talking about that. Maybe about five years ago, 2018. It's a futurist video where I was giving my prediction on things in the future. And I talked about that very concept of we don't allow our geniuses or our leaders to develop through their hero's journey to who they're supposed to be because we kill them along the journey. We, right? We do the job of the FBI. We do the job of the CIA now. Right. We do the job of the Cointel Pro because of the ideas and the way that we look at each other is the very ideas. Right. That the FBI had that they was pushing when they was sowing seeds of dissent. We do that in our own family. Why the hell you get jealous of what somebody else have when we live in a world of abundance? You jealous of what your brother has. You don't want to get let them get too much. Why the fuck is you in competition with somebody you supposed to love? So, you know, I practice spiritual and emotional detachment from this world because ain't nothing about this world fair. Where I'm at in the world, if the world was caught up to men speaking truth and being real, man, I'd be on every TV show in the world. I'd be, I'd be delivering every speech that there could, but my type of black man still ain't celebrated. It ain't celebrated yet. I just defy the odds. It ain't celebrated. We are creating the celebration. We're celebrating ourselves. We're pushing the door. And some of you all that work in these companies, that work in these places, you can't just watch this shit. Y'all can't just watch this. You got to help this become what it's supposed to be. That's how it works. We got too much of that let me just see what happens mentality instead of that let me make it happen. When you see something going good, add something valuable to that. That's the problem that I see the biggest. Oh, boy, I'm watching you. Well, stop watching and getting the game. Yeah, man, Keith, I've been, I've been watching for a while, man. Then some people will hit me with the, yeah, I ain't bought none of your products, nothing like that. And, but nah, but I like what you're doing. Damn, all right. I support you, though. Do you really? So, and I ain't, you know, I ain't begging or asking. I'm just saying this is a mentality that we have. We don't actually understand how to help each other make things happen, right? When you see something you like, magnify that. Magnify that. That's what that's that's my focus. Oh man, I like bruh music. I'm gonna share that. I'm gonna buy that. I wonder if I can. Let me go some let me let me tell somebody about it so that can help enhance that. People work in these positions, you supposed to figure out, man, I like what Key's doing. Let me figure out how I can pitch this to my company, get a sponsor, or how to get them to come over here, or how we can spend some money, or how we can add a contribution or some collaboration. Like, yeah, what you think you in that position for? Nah. Got a big ass mosquito in here. You in that position to do something with it. So when we in positions to help each other, that's our responsibility. You know what I mean? Like some of you all won't have those jobs forever. 